Hey all, my name is Bhanu Renekuntla. So today I'll be talking about uh, tuning uh, low latency online feature stores. Uh, we will review what are the performance issues that we've faced with our online feature store at Lyft um, and how we plan to address. And by the end of the talk, you'll understand how to design a performant low latency online feature store. A quick introduction about myself. I'm a software engineer at Lyft. I work on feature stores. I'm broadly interested in building and scaling ML systems. Outside of work, I like to travel, hike. I'm also interested in cooking and a little bit of music. Um, so let's review uh, the feature store setup at left, um, and we can talk about the performance issues. So feature store is a very critical component at left, which supports different use cases such as fraud detection, rider pricing, driver matching, uh, location search, uh, growth and incentives. So here's an example of location search where we are ranking locations based on the user context, such as, such as time of the day, um, to present locations that are most relevant to the user search query. Uh, there are different uh, types of features that we support. Some of them are running aggregates, for example, number of rides taken by a driver in the last 30 days. Uh, some of them are categorical features, uh, for example, ease driver approved for driving could be a feature. Uh, some of them are geotemporal features. Uh, for example, think about uh, historical uh, pricing information for each geo hash. Um, we also support embeddings, which are just vectors or less. Let's talk about scale. So we manage about 2,500 features at left uh, and store about 30 terabytes of data or 100 billion uh, feature values. Peak read throughput is around 100 million gets per minute and write throughput is around uh, 5 billion updates per day. Uh, typically, we observe latencies of 8 milliseconds P50 and 40 milliseconds P99 for uh, get calls. So let's review the uh, architecture of our feature store. Uh, we support both uh, batch feature generation and uh, real-time feature generation. Uh, on the batch side, features are updated typically on a daily cadence orchestrated through Airflow. Uh, the real-time features are uh, updated in real time, which is supported by Pipeflink. On the feature serving side, we support both offline and online features. Offline features are stored in data warehouse and are typically used for ML inference or uh, training purpose. On the online side, uh, we, we support point lookups to be able to fetch features for a single ID, like a user ID or, or a driver ID. The online feature store at Lyft uh, is a Golang service on Kubernetes uh, backed by Redis and Dynamo. Uh, we have two important right paths to update features. The first one is uh, directly writing through the service which uh, via, we use a write around cache strategy, which means that we are uh, skipping write to Redis uh, and directly write to Dynamo. And we update the value on the cache only upon read. We have an alternate path, which is meant for uh, high volume writes, um, where we skip the service path and directly and uh, we skip the service part entirely and that's directly right to the Dynamo. This is done uh, powered by Spark jobs using DynamoDB connector. So let's look at the performance issues. Um, so firstly, what are we mentioning here? Uh, we want to optimize the latencies of our get call, which, which allows fetching uh, a list of features. And by latency here, I mean by um, end-to-end -end latency that is absorbed by the client. So just to give a reminder, our typical P50 latencies are around 8 milliseconds for P50 and 40 milliseconds for P99. I call this typical since the latency observed greatly depends on the data you're fetching, how it is cached, and your access patterns. So one of the uh, scenarios where we see uh, issues with latency is with high batch sizes. So in a typical ML model, you will need to fetch a list of features which can range from tens of features to hundreds of features. For example, in location search use case, we might rank around 20 candidates 
and each location might have let's say 20 features in this case you are fetching around 400 features in a single ranking call to support these kind of high batch say scenarios we what we do an approach called scatter gather fetching where we fetch um, the data in parallel through server side parallelization and also client side parallelization on the server side we use go channels uh, on on the client side we use g event to execute multiple http requests in, in parallel so at high batch sizes um, cache hit rate tends to be super important to ensure latency uh, latency latencies on the client end so this is because um, any cache hit uh, will need to be uh, fetched from Dynamo. And in a high batch scenario, let's say you have 100, uh, 100 features that you're fetching, even if five of them are have a cache miss, your entire call latency is, is dictated by Dynamo's latencies. This means stale latencies of Dynamo tend to weigh in heavily on the median latencies on the client end. In addition to this, timeouts, retries, rate limits, circuit breakers, all tend to put strain on latencies. So how does batch size impact latency? So in this chart, um, I'm comparing uh, two different batch sizes for the same use case. Uh, so the data being fetched is similar, just that the batch size is different. So the, the, the purple line um, indicates a high batch size of 250 features that, that are being fetched. And the brown line indicates um, a lower batch size and you can see a drastic uh, difference in the observed latencies by the client so how do you handle these kind of scenarios right so first thing is you want to maintain very high cache hit rate uh, this can be done with higher redis detail that way your keys are being used reused for a long time and there are less cache misses however this strategy negatively impacts the data freshness because we have a right around cache strategy um, in our right path. The other alternative that typically users tend to see, users tend to, tends to use is caching on the client and basically the downstream services caching uh, in their own Redis cluster maybe. This again comes with uh, a negative impact on the data freshness. The other scenario where we see uh, issues with latencies is geotemporal features. So geotemporal features are features where uh, we are storing data at a granularity of geo hash and time of the day. Uh, because we have the time element in the key definition, the access pattern tends to change every X minutes. For example, let's say you, you have uh, you, you have a different key for every five minutes, then your access pattern is changing every five minutes. Because of this, it's very difficult to maintain a high hit rate um, because you're not able to reuse the keys that have been cached in the last five minutes. In addition to this, because we are not able to maintain high hit rate, we tend to see significant spikes in P9 and latencies. So how do we handle this? Firstly, we want to make sure the the key granularity is in a way that caching works, right? So in this in this scenario, we just get rid of the minute element in, in the key. And that way you can reuse your cache uh, keys for a longer period in, in the specific case for an hour. By using some of these fixes, we were able to drop the latencies uh, from P9 and 40 milliseconds, sorry, P9 to 40, 40 milliseconds to around P9 to 20 milliseconds. In spite of these changes, you can see uh, the bad performance of the cache hit rate in this scenario, where the cache hit rate drops from around 95% to 55% at the top of every hour. This is best indicated in the P50 latency chart, where latency spikes in the beginning of, of the hour. Uh, in this scenario, latencies are acceptable, so it should, the spike is still manageable. However, what is not manageable is the uh, spikes in the P9 and latencies. With, with the R fixes, we're able to you know, reduce the uh, number of spikes we observe. And in this specific chart, I'm comparing the later P9 and latencies 
uh, for the current week uh, with compared to the last week. Um, and as you can see, the number of spikes have drastically reduced and also the, the, the height of the spikes have reduced. Uh, in, even though they have reduced, this is still not really in a great shape. So we, in addition to the fix as mentioned earlier, we also maybe want to async prefetch features to work around uh, these spikes in the latencies. The third scenario where we might see high latencies is due to uh, client side uh, processing overhead. As I mentioned earlier, we use a thick uh, client uh, thick client to support client side parallelization, which is necessary for the scatter gather to work. However, in some cases, this can add significant processing overhead or latency spikes due to resource contention or Python global interpreter logs or simply due to you know, circuit breakers where requests might be stuck in pending state. So what is the solution here? You want to maybe use more resources or you want to tune your uh, circuit breaker settings or things like that to make sure that you are not adding uh, overhead. So in this chart, I'm comparing the latencies uh, as observed by the client, which is the blue, with um, the latencies that are absorbed by the service mesh. Uh, so it's all end-to-end -end latencies. So if you observe the, the client side latencies uh, to the left of the vertical blue line, you can see significant um, overhead in latencies and also uh, the latency is too spiky, right? Um, however, the latencies on the right of the vertical blue line is not the same. And the difference here is the resources used. Uh, as indicated by the red line, um, we have increased the number of uh, resources used on the client end and basically scaled up the downstream service from 35% uh, usage to 75% usage. Basically, I almost double the number of resources on the client set. And you can see a drastic decrease in the uh, client end-to-end -end latencies. This basically ind indicates that you have significant resource contention um, on the client end where um, the it is adding to a overhead uh, to the latencies that are observed by the client. So to give a quick review of the, the performance issues we have observed, um, tier, tier storage that we are uh, using as of now is not performant for scatter gather. Uh, it's difficult to do uh, effective caching in some cases. Um, and more specifically, um, tail latencies on the Dynamo N tend to you know, weigh, weigh in heavily on the median latencies on the client, uh, which makes it difficult to manage the scatter gather. Uh, and secondly, you, we want to avoid using a thick client because having a thick client can add latency overhead and it could be difficult or challenging to manage these latencies uh, for each individual downstream uh, service. So impact of these issues is that you typically see uh, higher latencies than what is ideal. And also for a low latency application or latency sensitive application, it is difficult to onboard onto the feature store. So what is the path forward? We want to redesign the feature store to be able to do effective scatter gather. And this can be done by using a single low latency persistent store. Um, and secondly, we want to co-locate features so that it matches the access patterns. And when, if you're fetching a batch of features, if they're all co-located, you can get them in a single network call. And that is the idea of doing effective scatter together. And secondly, you want to be able to use a lightweight client and offer a scatter together to the server so that it's much more manageable. So this is how the new design looks like. You want to replace the, the storage layer with only Redis, um, with basically direct write to Redis, and which means that Redis is always fresh. This ensures that you're able to do effective scatter gather. So 
we want to enable efficient storage and faster fetching by using Redis. This can be done by using Redis hashes to store data natively um, and co-locating feature, feature data. Um, and we also want to use compression techniques like a string compression or hashing the keys to be able to store the data more efficiently uh, and use less resources. Redis pipelines and multi-get are very effective to be able to fetch uh, data in much less network calls and do an effective scatter gather. So yeah, that's it for my talk today. I would like to thank my colleague Settler for supporting this work and also giving feedback on the deck. Uh, so yeah, here is my contact information. If you have any questions uh, or concerns, you can reach out to me. Um, yeah, I'm happy to answer anything. So yeah, um, have a great rest of your conference. Thank you.